So it was wet and smelly, and the only thing Crad could say was that I'd misaimed my skipping. Yeah, thanks, Captain Obvious. Blackie just looked guilty and a little bit unwell, and despite the smell, Kitty just wanted to headbutt me. I realized I'd put something in my pocket earlier and hoped fervently I hadn't lost it. Oh, wait, you don't have the whole picture. I started at the wrong spot. Sorry. So Blackie was holding on to me and we skipped. I knew something had gone wrong straight away because... <laughs> this is Nidak, my adventure. Written down in a better way than I can tell it. Episode 31. Dresses are stupid. Water enveloped Nadek. Her dress engulfed her, making it hard to swim. The need to breathe became stronger. She swirled her arms around, trying to gather the skirt. Her legs kicked harder when they were somewhat freed. Panic almost flooded into her. She broke the surface. Nadek took a deep breath and sputtered as she sank again. The skirt opened up around her as she let it go, struggling to use her arms in an attempt to aid her burning legs. When one of her hands hit a solid edge, she turned and clung to it. Before she could wipe her eyes, a hot liquid slammed over her, accompanied by a terrible roar. It stung her closed eyes, and smelled vile, as putrid as, as the spit of an alpaca, like bile made of grass. Apologies, the weak voice of Blackie in her head. Nausea curled Nadek's stomach in a knot. She swallowed repeatedly, keeping a hand on the edge. She ducked under water. Her other hand pushed the water above her head away. She hoped that would give her a somewhat clean area to emerge from. She broke the surface again, wiped her face and opened her eyes. Her vision was blurred. The sting was awful. The smell was worse. Her dress was too heavy. She couldn't lift herself out of the water. Her arms protested. Her leg muscles seized up. Darkness. A tightness around her chest. She left the water. The tightness disappeared and the faint, blurred light of the lantern was back. A dark, lumen figure towered above her slumped form. Clean eye! Hold! The feel of Blackie's tongue licking her was something Nadek hoped she'd never have to experience again. At least she wasn't naked this time. For a moment, she didn't have the strength to do anything but let it happen. When Blackie jostled her enough to turn her around, she got to her hands and knees. All right, enough already, enough. Blackie stopped licking her, but continued licking the ground. Nirak purposely didn't look at it, although her vision had improved. Her stomach was still unsure about the surrounding smell. She crawled a little out of the way and sat down with a sigh. Kitty nuzzled her. You misaimed by a meter. You had the area for Blackie right, but forgot to count yourself in. Don't worry, you'll get better. The dragon will get better at handling it too. This one wanted to jump in after you. Kradek gestured towards Kitty, whose leash she was holding. Was that everything Kradek had to say? Nidek almost drowned and had been vomited on by a dragon, and she commented on the skipping. Weird, weird woman. Definitely family. Do you think this dress is salvageable? 
If I hadn't been wearing it, there wouldn't have been an issue for me in the water. But still, it would be a shame to see it go to waste, since it must have been expensive. Oh, don't worry about that. This was an old one. It doesn't matter. I've put enough coins in your purses to commission several new ones. Melia knows to take you to Matilda tomorrow. What? What's wrong? Nidek's eyes widened. She jumped up, failed, fell over, but straight away tried again, slower this time. She frantically searched for the skirt's pocket hole on the right side. Balls! I hope I didn't lose it. When she found the slit, she shoved her hand in, opening and closing her fingers wide to get through the wet fabric. There it was. She brought her hand back out, holding the piece of the statue. The blue and pink strata were more vibrant because of the wetness. That... Where did you find that? Crydek's hand shook as she outstretched it towards the piece. We found a statue, part of it. I'm not sure why I didn't leave it in my room for the night. It just felt right to take along. You found a part? Which part of the statue did you find? Which part? The asses. I mean, the middle. You know, hips and male and female body parts and all. The bottoms. You've found the bottoms? Crydek sounded on the verge of laughter or hysterical tears, perhaps both. Did, did you have your halberd? Did it react? It did. It turned hot. What does it mean? It's made by the statue, isn't it? Wani told me it was called the statue of the originals, but because it was too powerful... I somehow divided it in parts and dispersed those? Nidek's aunt blinked. It caused tears to jump on her cheeks. She absently wiped them away. It's close to the truth, but not complete. I was always certain the halberd was a PPW. I knew I was right. Can you put me there? You've been there, so you could skip back. Now? <laughs> Nidak barked a laugh at the incredulity of the request. Her aunt snorted. Nidak snorted in reply, surprised at the unexpected sound. Of course not. I'll come back tomorrow around noon. I'd suggest you take Blackie along too. You could probably leave her there. It should be safe if it's far enough. The dancing light of the lantern cast a dramatic shadow on her questioning face. There truly is no reason to keep her locked up in this building. I'm embarrassed I hadn't thought about the solution your skipping could bring. Blackie sniffed. Both Nadek and Crydek jumped. She doesn't want to stay away from me. She wants to stay here. Nadek was astonished at Blackie's attachment. It was a pleasant sort of amazement. She was glad the large beast wanted to stick around. She doesn't like the thought of skipping several times a day to eat and everything else but she likes it better than being stuck in here with her own waist. I'm sure the sickness after skipping will improve after a while. She said at last, mostly for Blackie. You should probably get going before the guards wake up. Can you help me undress first? Turning her back towards Craddock, she began unlacing the strings of her skirt. Undress? What? You don't think I'm going to walk through the city with this wet dress and take it into my room to stink out the whole place, do you? No. Come on, get this thing off me. You'll just have to place a temporary need on me like you did with Blackie. 
I'll have to go with you to the gate to close them again, remember? Silence was the only answer she received, and the tugging at the back of her dress. Fortunately, undressing wasn't as arduous as dressing, although it still took a decent amount of time, enough for Nedek and Kradek to feel the urgency. When Nedek prepared to also remove her undergarment, Kradek stopped her and announced she wouldn't be able to use her need on Nedek. She had used her limit today. If she used more, she would fall in a spontaneous and unwakeable sleep. Nedak almost took it all off anyway, but then decided to leave it on. For now. She made sure Blackie was going to be alright. The black beast had already curled herself up in a donut. It looked empty, without Kitty in the middle. They would be able to maintain their mental connection from a distance, which was a comfort. She walked Kitty towards Blackie for a last headbutt, and out they went. They ran. Craddock's breathing grew heavy after only a few streets, but she persevered. She didn't stop at the gates. A quick goodbye yell at Nedek, who didn't pause before slamming the gates shut. Even the beams back in place was more difficult than removing them. It was a two-man job, for sure. She managed it at the same time she heard clanging from above. She pushed herself against the wall, sneaking the opposite way from where the other two guards returned. She got lost several times before finding her in. To be certain, she checked the sign. The original dragon. But that was it. Craddock claimed it was one of the inns most loyal to the Isho family. Nedek wasn't certain what to think of the name. It certainly felt fitting. She retreated across the street to an alleyway. The location of her room was in front of her on the second level. She removed her undergarments. She did not want to bring them in her room. The acid smell would be impossible to remove. Only then did she remember to have a look around for other people. Kitty hissed at the same time emphasizing Nadek's idiocy. A scruff-looking man straightened from where he'd been lying. Too close. The light of the single lantern on the inn's front door didn't reach far enough to see the fellow's face. Despite that, it was obvious he was up to no good. Very kind of you to undress, girl, he cackled in a high-pitched voice. I am no girl, Neda kicked out with her left foot, hitting him right in the stomach. He doubled over, bringing his face in perfect placement for her knee. He fell backwards. Come, Kitty, she scooped him up, putting him on her shoulders. You better be gone from this alleyway pod tomorrow, creep. She turned around, bent through her knees going through the motions of skipping, focusing her destination in her mind and view. A shuffling behind her warned of the man attempting to jump her again. Gross. The last letters of the word sounded like a hiss coming from empty air. You have been listening to Nedek, Chapter 31 Dresses are stupid. Narrated, adventured and lived through by myself. Nedek. Written in a better way than I can tell it by Astrid Jeff. Don't go just yet. We've got bloopers coming up. Find us on Twitter at Astrid Jeff and at Nedek and Kitty. If you like this show and would like to support it, a good way to do that is share it around to everyone you know. An even better way is to rate and review it on iTunes or whichever podcatcher you use. (laughs) 
Oh, fuck my brain. Need a... <clears throat> the dragon will get better at handling it, too. I've put enough coins in your purses to commission several new ones. Babe, done, bird. Crydex's hand. <clears throat> Crydex's hand shook as she outstretched the water piece. Crydex's hand shook as she outstretched it towards the piece. Wow, why is it so difficult? Crydex's hand shook as she had stretched it towards the piece. Nedak barked a laugh at incredi- barked a laugh at the incredulity of the request. Incredulity. You could probably leave her there. It should be safe. It should be safe. It <laughs> should be safe. It's fine, nice. So for sure, is this a new rocket? No, it is not. You could probably leave her there. It should be safe. <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> oh, you could probably leave her there. It should be shape. Fuck me. He cackled in a high-pitched voice. Boop, 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 boop.